Hi everyone. So in today's video, I'll be doing a thrift store challenge where I'll fix up our mantle in the living room using only thrift store finds. I have a $50 limit. I think I'll allow myself to use things of nature should it come to that, you know, since that doesn't cost anything. But I want to try to get everything in a thrift store for under $50. So let's get going. <laughs> to that thrift store up on 250. Right now I can't even think of the name. It's not far from Apple Creek. So I'm back home again and I'll go ahead and show you the items that I got. I was really satisfied with what I found today. In fact, I found everything I wanted for the mantle in that first thrift store, the Home and Hope. I haven't really added it together for sure, but I think I'm okay with my $50 limit. 
Uh, the first thing I have here is this mirror. I thought it's so pretty. It is my most expensive item and it was $15.95. I don't know why this rack just caught my eye. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I think it might be a wine rack, and I paid $2.59 for it. I got these two fairly hideous looking pumpkins. Well, this one's a jack-o'-lantern, and it actually has a light fixture in it, the way it looks. I'll probably tear that out, uh, turn it around so the face is facing the wall, and paint it. I really like the shape of it, and I'm not sure what's going on with this one why you'd have a black and white pumpkin like this, but plan to paint it too. This pumpkin was $3.99 and this one was 99 cents. Uh, this basket here was $2. And then I have plans for these balls to turn them into pumpkins. I might just need the one pack, not quite sure do I actually need this one. Uh, this one was a dollar and this one was 75 cents. I really like the design on this jar and I paid $1.50 for it. Not sure does that show up or not, but it looks like wheat. And then I have some fabric, or pillowcases I should say, but I plan to probably tear these into strips and use them for my little pumpkins here that I plan to create. And 50 cents, 50 cents, and a dollar for this one. I have a few other things I want to show you that have nothing to do with the mantle, but when I'm in a thrift store anyway and I see a good bargain or I see something that I know I'll use someday or maybe make something for the Etsy shop, I will definitely get it. And I ended up finding some really pretty teacups. And you guys know how I'm always on the lookout for those. I like to get some wax poured into them and sell them on the Etsy shop. And in this case, I think I'm planning on having them in my booth next weekend. It's the 8th and the 9th is when the Harvest Fest is. And I thought it would be so cute to have some teacup candles there. Since we're on the subject of the Berlin Harvest Fest, I thought I'd just jump in here and kind of give you all the details quickly. And then we'll get back to teacups. The dates are this coming weekend, September 8th and 9th. And it normally kicks off Friday morning and lasts into Saturday night. So if you come in that time frame, there's going to be something going on. But as far as me and my little booth there in town, which I'll show you that location, it's if you're on Main Street at the square where the First Baptist Church is, a ginger house is on that square, and then music on the square, all catty corner from each other. But I'm going to be on the street, like literally on the road. It's going to be blocked, of course, but I'll be there under a little canopy with my little booth structure that we had made for this event. But hopefully this will kind of give you an idea of where it is. And as far as the hours, at this point, I'm kind of planning on being there at Friday noon. And I'm not quite sure how long into the evening. Um, I'll probably decide that as the day goes on. And then Saturday, I plan to be there probably around 9 o'clock. And then just into the afternoon, maybe 3 o'clock. And honestly, I've never been to this event before. So I'm not quite sure, you know, how it's going to go. But, you know, things might be subject to change. But as of now, that's kind of what I'm planning on doing. I'd be excited to see you guys there. I'll be sharing more on Instagram as the week goes on. So make sure to follow me on there if you want to stay updated on my exact times that I'll be there. But again, there's going to be other fun things to do. If you're just in that time frame of Friday or Saturday, I'm sure you're going to enjoy yourselves. Plenty of good food. It always smells so good in town with all of the ribs that are being cooked. Let's get back to the video. I paid $4 for this whole set. It's the punch bowl and all of the cups. And then in the Goodwill, I found some just individual cups. They had a deal going there where you could buy six cups for a dollar. I did pick up this oval frame. I, of course, would switch it out with either another picture or just not have any in at all. Sometimes I just like to see an oval frame. At the time, I was thinking I might need it for my mantle, but I think with the items that I have, I'll have enough. I'm not sure that I have room for it. I'm going to store it up in my little storage room, and it's something I might use, you know, later on. And I found this cute little stool. I really have a weakness for stools, actually. Uh, but this one was $2.50. So all in all, I had a great day thrifting today, and I just hit two thrift stores. Um, so much fun and such a good feeling to get all of these things for just not a lot of money. I paid $1.59 for this pretty white curtain, and I plan to turn it into pillow covers. We have this turkey pillow cover that is really popular, especially in the fall season, and I thought it would be a good addition to our booth next weekend. So the first thing I did was set everything on the mantle, kind of how I'm thinking of arranging it and try to, you know, situate it so it's, you know, proportionately, you know, it looks right to the eye, I guess. Of course, with all of these different color combinations, it looks kind of hideous, actually, but it kind of gives me the picture of what, you know, it'll look like, again, with the different sizes of the things and the shapes and the textures.
so here's what it looks like and I plan to stick something in the vase here to get some height uh, to kind of match this side. I think it'll look better that way. Probably just a branch or something. I'm going to try something different here. I'm going to paint the wheat design dark brown and then once that has dried I'll probably apply a lighter color over it. Uh oh this is old paint and not spraying the best but uh, I think I can manage to get some some of it on here. I got this Magnolia Home spray paint at Lowe's and it was fairly pricey, but I'm gonna give it a try. This color is shiplap. I thought it looked like such a pretty off-white color. Oh my, did this ever bleed through? As you can see, it actually turned pink on me. What I'm gonna to try to do is use another color of spray paint, maybe gray or black, and that has worked in the past at times where that kind of blocked all of the stains. Probably being that it's a, a dark you know, color pigment, we'll go with black here. Now we'll try it again, and I'm kind of liking this black. I'm thinking if I want to distress some edges after it's white, uh, this black will show through. So I'm just gonna test a, a section for now, let that dry and see if it, if anything shows through, because I do need to paint the other side black. I want to do that before I start painting white. I didn't get a video of all of this, but it turned out beautiful. No more pink stains showing through. I wanted some sort of character on this piece, so I opted to go with a number letter combination, just random, um, just to give it some character. I used the parchment paper method to do this. I printed out a design on parchment paper in reverse. That way, once I apply it to my surface, it'll be just right. We have a beautiful late summer morning here in northeastern Ohio. It's a little bit chilly, but really nice. I will be working out here on the back deck where I can enjoy the outdoors. This fabric was really easy to tear into strips, and now I'm ready to drill a hole into the styrofoam balls. Pretty sure I made pumpkins last year similar to this where I used yarn instead of fabric. I'm going to start out by pressing some lines into the first pumpkin here, uh, see if that helps to give it more of a pumpkin-like shape. It also helps to press the ball, like the top and bottom part, down so it has more, again, of a pumpkin shape, not just perfectly round. I'm not quite sure how this is going to work as far as connecting the fabric strips together. Can I create a knot without having weird little lumps on my pumpkin? Probably start out with just one strip and see how far you know it goes as far as you know wrapping around the pumpkin. If I can make all of my ends end up in the middle. I'm also not quite sure how I feel about this color. Um, when I saw it, I thought you know of course it looks like fall, but I really wanted more of a pumpkin color. Uh, didn't find anything in that thrift store. I guess if it doesn't look right, I'll just not use it. I'm gonna go ahead and knot all of my fabrics together. I think I, I can just make them kind of end up in the middle, uh, you know, stuff them in, even if they don't quite end up there. In the end, I plan to use a twig for my stem that should hold everything in place on the top. And I think the bottom should be okay with just having all the fabric kind of stuffed in there. 
So basically I just tied a screw to the end of a strip of fabric, knotted some of the fabrics together, and any time a knot would come on the outside of the pumpkin, I just cut it off and kind of stuffed it inside, wrapped it around until the whole pumpkin was covered, and then to plug my holes, I think basically, again, the top will get a wooden stem, and the bottom I'm just gonna stuff some fabric in uh, just to hold it in place. With this pillowcase, there's not a seam in the, on the one side, so I'll be able to make longer strips, which is pretty awesome. I got some kind of pumpkin colored paint at Hobby Lobby and here I'm going to paint the small pumpkin that color and the larger one will probably be an off white. Initially, when I saw this mirror, I thought I'd probably paint it, but I kind of like the color it is. I mean, it could be lightened up just a bit. I'm gonna see what happens if I run the sander over it. I ended up removing the mirror. It was just easier to sand down the frame if the mirror wasn't there. Um, didn't want to scratch it up. All in all, I'm pretty pleased with how things turned out here for the mantle. Of course, it's not like your items from Hobby Lobby or someplace like that would be, but uh, sometimes to me it's more, it means more if I kind of do it myself or if I find things at a bargain price. My total amount that I spent was $30.77 and some of these items I might have here year round and just kind of fix things up for the season. I really like this white rack. I think I could stick things in here that would be fitting for the season. I'm liking the mirror too. So those are kind of stable pieces. My pumpkin colored pumpkin didn't turn out the best. If you look closely, you still see those little sparkly dots that were on there. I probably should have sanded that off, but if you don't look too close, you don't see it. I know this, of course, isn't a thrift store find, but I have to place a candle on here. Uh, choosing to go with caramelized pralines, I've rarely used this scent, honestly. It's more of a foodie scent, but it smells amazing. And of course, we do have these on the Etsy shop, uh, freshly stocked. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and are maybe inspired to visit your local thrift stores and see what you can find for the fall season. Um, it's so much fun. As always, I hope your day is going great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.